Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today for, um, uh, for this webinar. Uh, I'm excited to share with you some of the features that we have introduced in Active Reports uh, 15.1. Um, today, uh, I have with me uh, my colleagues, Tyler Barlock uh, and Christian Wirt. Uh, both of them are on the Active Reports uh, technical engagement team. Um, if you have submitted questions or support uh, cases, you have likely interacted with them. Um, they'll be here to help me uh, answer some questions uh, throughout the presentation. Um, so let's go ahead and continue uh, with this uh, webinar. All right. Um, so what we're going to do today, um, as usual, we'll go over uh, briefly an introduction to active reports. Um, this is mainly for anyone who is uh, not familiar with active reports or is new to active reports. Um, and then throughout the webinar, we'll have, uh, we'll have a poll um, and just to sort of gauge the audience to see where everybody's at with regards to their experience and uh, with active reports and um, the different report types that you guys are using. Um, and then we'll go ahead into the um, uh, features, some of the more interesting features. Uh, we'll dive a little deeper into them. Um, uh, and obviously these features are uh, uh, made to uh, make your life easy as a developer, uh, as a business owner, uh, but also make the life of your consumers, report consumers easy as well. So we'll go over some of the benefits of these uh, particular features. Um, and of course, we'll have some demos throughout the webinar as well. Um, and then finally, uh, we'll wrap it up with some questions and answers um, uh, towards the end. Uh, but that doesn't mean that if you have questions throughout the presentation, uh, that uh, you know, uh, uh, feel free to answer, answer, ask those questions because uh, 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 we'll have a team, uh, Christian and Tyler, uh, that will be able to answer the questions throughout the webinar. And then again, if there are some questions that need to be, uh, that need a little more elaboration, we'll answer those uh, particular questions um, at the end of the session. Um, and then uh, uh, post-session, you'll have um, uh, a chance to uh, uh, fill out a quick uh, five question survey, it should take you less than like two minutes probably, um, to, to fill that out. So that basically gives us an idea of, um, you know, how, the, uh, how you perceive the webinar, how you perceive these features, and, um, you know, just sort of make our next presentations a little better um, and uh, to basically gear the product towards your uh, benefit as well. Um, so again, you know, just some housekeeping items just to reiterate, if you have questions, you can feel free to ask those questions in the questions panel of the uh, GoToWebinar uh, control. Um, and then uh, in a few days, you will receive an email from us uh, with the PowerPoint that um, I am using, um, as well as some of the samples and uh, 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 projects that I'll be uh, showing in the demo. Um, and again, uh, just to mention uh, the survey after the webinar as well. Um, so let's go ahead and continue um, the introduction to Active Reports. As uh, you might be aware, Active Reports is um, a reporting solution that started off, you know, at the very beginnings of .NET, at the very beginnings of, um, you know, the Visual Studio IDE. Um, it was the first one to introduce essentially, you know, a, a built-in uh, designer within uh, Visual Studio. So it is a somewhat of a pioneering reporting solution, um, not only for .NET and now for JS as well. Um, we have a uh, dedicated team, uh, specifically dedicated to active reports, whereas other products might have you know, teams that are focused on several different products. Uh, we are solely uh, dedicated to active reports. So that's you know, a team of developers of uh, support and sales and product management and um, you know, everything else in between. Um, and some of the you know, advanced features that you can uh, use with Active Reports obviously are listed here, the extensible APIs, the uh, .NET Core and .NET 5 support, um, and then uh, we have multiple report types, as you'll see. Uh, and all of this is essentially to give you the flexibility to create any kind of reports that you really uh, want and need to create. Um, so we'll go over, go over some of these features and you'll see some of these features in use during the demos today. Um, again, if there are any questions with regards to any of this, um, you know, feel free to uh, ask those questions uh, throughout the demo, throughout the uh, webinar or post-webinar. Um, you'll have our email addresses there. Um, one thing that I would like to uh, point out here um, is that this uh, month, at least for the next uh, 10 days or so, 
uh, we are uh, uh, having a promotion on Act for Active Reports, um, and this is a free maintenance uh, offer. Um, so if you use the code uh, uh, for this promotion, um, it will give you a, a, a free webinar. So this, I'm uh, sorry, a free uh, maintenance package. This uh, is worth $500 generally, uh, but just for the next few days, uh, we are giving this uh, package away for free. What that gets you is if you have any uh, support cases, anything like that, uh, you get elevated and priority support. You get 24 hour uh, response time guaranteed. Uh, you are able to call us on the phone. So you get phone access, but uh, along with that also comes screen sharing options. So if you need to, if we need to see your code, uh, if we need to see your screen, uh, you know, all of that uh, is included. And then the biggest perk is that uh, next year when we release the next major version, uh, which is going to be 16, um, that will be free for you. Um, so if you haven't already purchased Active Reports, uh, this is a great opportunity to purchase uh, Active Reports within the next uh, 10 days. So the, the promotion again ends May 15th. Um, and the promotion code uh, is AR. Uh, uh, A-R-A-P-R-21. Uh, so we'll post that as well throughout the, uh, uh, throughout the webinar. Um, uh, let's go ahead and continue with the feature discussions. Um, now, before I actually uh, start the feature discussion itself, um, let me go ahead and ask uh, a, a poll. Let me uh, bring up a poll just to sort of um, gauge uh, where you guys are at. Um, so let's go ahead and ask you, um, essentially, what type of reports do you currently use? So we have uh, three different report types. Uh, we have the RDL, we have page, and we have section report. And section reports come in two flavors. Which one is an RPX uh, file, it's an XML based. And the other one is um, a, uh, a code based, uh, which is a um, C sharp or a VB um, file. Okay, so we're at 63%. We'll give everybody just a couple of more minutes to uh, uh, jump on, but it does look like the majority of our users are section report, uh, uh, attendees rather, are section report users. Um, so let's go ahead and close this poll. All right, so if I share this with you now. Uh, you can see the results. So a lot of you guys are using uh, code-based section reports as well as uh, RPX files. And then of course there are some RDL users as well which is great. Um, all right, thank you guys for filling this poll, uh, answering this poll. Let's go ahead and hide and continue with these feature discussions. Um, all right, so uh, within Active Reports uh, 15.1, we released several uh, features. Um, the one feature that I'm assuming a lot of you are here for um, is the section reports uh, support um, to deployment to Linux, essentially. Um, so just to give you a little bit of a history, uh, a little bit of history on this particular uh, feature. Uh, we introduced .NET Core support uh, back in Active Reports 14. Um, what that was essentially supported uh, at that time, we supported page and RDL reports. Um, so page and RDL reports were supported in um, you know, ASP.NET Core applications um, and the deployment to Linux was supported as well. So you could deploy to Windows, uh, you could deploy to Linux, you could deploy to Mac. Um, you know, I'm focusing on Linux here because the majority of the questions that we've had so far um, is Linux. But if you wanted to deploy to Mac, of course, that is uh, uh, available as well. That is supported as well. Um, then in 15.0, uh, the initial release of 15, uh, we brought in uh, section reports, um, RPX and code based, uh, essentially, um, support for ASP.NET Core. Um, what that meant is you could actually run your uh, section reports. Uh, in an ASP.NET Core application, uh, but it did rely on IIS. So it was only, uh, the deployment was only supported on Windows. So you could not deploy to Linux. Um, now with 15.1, we're bridging that gap. Uh, we're bringing in that support for uh, Linux deployment for section reports uh, for both code-based and uh, RPX formats. Uh, so you could deploy your application, uh, your web application, the ASP.NET Core or ASP.NET 5 uh, application to um, uh, Linux or to Mac. Uh, so all of that is supported. Uh, it's no longer restricted to Windows only. Um, now, what this support includes 
uh, is uh, most of the almost, uh, I should say, all the uh, common controls and the features that you would use the use cases, the common use cases for uh, section report controls. Um, all of that is supported uh, when you deploy to uh, Linux. All right. um, the uh, other thing is that uh, when you deploy to Linux, you can either uh, render these reports uh, in one of our viewers. Um, so the JS viewer in this case, because the JS viewer is the one that supports um, the uh, ASP.NET Core uh, applications. Um, or uh, you could export them uh, from the server, directly from the server, uh, to PDF, TIFF, or uh, text formats. So obviously there's these two ways of uh, delivering your reports. Generally, uh, they are exported uh, or they are previewed uh, in one of our viewers. Uh, now, in order to make this... Um, uh, deployment to Linux uh, possible in order to make this happen, we introduced a uh, new property for the uh, section report, uh, and this is the compatibility mode, compatibility mode property in the section report. So if you have section reports open in your um, uh, designer, uh, there is a new property for the report itself. Uh, it is called compatibility mode. Um, now setting this property to cross-platform uh, this is what basically enables uh, you to deploy your session reports to uh, Windows or a non-Windows, uh, a non-GDI uh, environment, essentially. Um, so this compatibility mode has a GDI and a cross-platform uh, option. Uh, if you want to deploy to Linux, uh, that's the first thing you would do is set that property to cross-platform. Um, now, one of the major uh, benefits of this new rendering um, this cross-platform rendering is that you uh, we've we've actually improved on the PDF and TIFF uh, exports. Uh, you are much much closer, almost 100% to WYSIWYG reporting. Uh, and we'll sort of come cover this a little bit more in uh, in, in the next feature that we'll discuss. Uh, but let's go ahead and keep going on this Linux and section report. So just a couple of notes for deployment. Uh, again, the first thing to note is that this is for your web applications, um, the WinForms and WPF. Uh, viewers are not supported currently. Um, that is something that we are uh, uh, planning on doing. Uh, but in this particular release, it is not supported. Um, again, uh, the comp compatibility mode uh, property, uh, you would set that to cross-platform. Um, on your server uh, or on your host machine, uh, you would install uh, the, lib, uh, the libgdi plus uh, prop, uh, 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 libgdi plus, uh, you would install it on your host. Um, and then you can deploy either as a self-contained uh, deployment uh, or you can install the .NET Core and .NET 5 um, on your server. So either way, um, that's essentially uh, what is required for section report deployment to Linux. Uh, the, uh, a couple things to note with regards to section reports, um, you know, support on Linux is that there are some features that are currently not supported. Again, uh, the majority of some of these features will be, uh, we are working on uh, bringing in um, uh, in, in, in our uh, subsequent releases. Uh, but currently at this, these are the limitations for section reports uh, on Linux is that uh, the rich text box, um, we support the HTML rendering. Uh, so RDF is not supported currently. Um, direct printing and printer settings are not supported. The, worker, the workaround of course for this is to export to PDF and then uh, use the uh, print, uh, uh, printing capabilities from there. Um, from the PDF reader or something, you know, uh, just sort of work around the print um, um, uh, limitations here. Uh, custom controls, OLED objects, uh, and then uh, OLEDB data sources, um, and the rest of these um, uh, uh, um, features uh, are currently not supported. So Excel format and, uh, and RTF exports, they are not uh, supported currently. But again, um, these are some things that are working, that we are working on bringing in in subsequent releases. Um, of active reports. <clears throat> um, okay, uh, let's go ahead and continue. Uh, the next feature is uh, the font uh, resolving uh, feature. Um, so this is something that uh, we had in, uh, in in some of our other products, but again, we wanted to bring in bring it into active reports specifically for uh, this particular reason uh, that you know we want to make sure that um, the uh, uh, the fonts that you use in your reports are available in other um, uh, operating systems. As I'm sure you're aware, um, the different operating systems, Linux and you know, Windows, uh, they have quite fundamental differences uh, between them. Um, so fonts being one of them and font support being one of them. 
Um, now that Active, of course, is more of a cross-platform cross product, um, you as the developer and as the creator of the course, you should have the ability to um, configure um, your fonts on, the, on these different platforms. Um, so in order to do this, we introduced uh, the iFont Resolver interface um, and ex that extends the API um, to basically give you this abil ability to uh, embed basically custom fonts or in in inject custom fonts into your application or use them in your application um, on the different platforms. So you can configure uh, fonts for preview or uh, exports uh, on all of these platforms uh, without having to install them. And this is, you know, for, for Docker, uh, this is a major thing. Um, so I think this is a huge benefit uh, with this release. Um, now, uh, this is not only for section reports. It is. Uh, it also includes the page and RDL. So this API can be used to uh, use custom fonts um, in your page and RDL reports, uh, as well as section reports. But again, for section reports, we just have to make sure that the compatibility mode um, is set to cross-platform. Um, and once you do, uh, set that. Uh, you can use custom fonts. Uh, you can configure them using a, a, a code as shown here, or you can uh, um, configure them using a um, config file. Um, so let me uh, bring up a, uh, a sample for you guys. Mm, excuse me. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at um, a project here. Um, and what I'm going to do is run the project and I'll show you um, what uh, essentially this would look like, uh, what we're doing. So um, bear with me, it's running here. <clears throat> okay. Come on, there we go. Okay, so what we have here is preview this. It's essentially a, a simple report with two barcodes. Uh, the barcode here obviously is using uh, Arial font, and then uh, the bottom barcode, this is the one that will be using the special uh, code 28 font. Uh, so this is the special uh, font that, that, it's, that, it, that is being used. Um, without the font resolving, uh, obviously you see the result is not um, pretty. Um, so uh, what we do is if I bring the project over to the window here, okay. So we have a the main CS basically. It uses it passes the uh, uh, um, uh, uses the font resolver API. Um, and that is coming from the uh, uh, barcode font resolver uh, class here. And all this class really is doing is uh, just res registering this font. Uh, so if I bring in the fonts folder, all right, you can see the code 28 font here. Uh, so all that's doing is basically registering it and using it within the application. So now I have uh, uncommented this line. So if I preview, uh, this report again, if I load this report again, uh, you will see the um, the barcode uh, showing a little uh, better, uh, much better, I should say. Um, so we'll give this a minute to pop up here. Okay. So if I preview again, you will see the barcode shows up as expected. All right. All right. Let's continue on. So that's the font resolver. Uh, feature. Again, you know, when you're deploying to Linux and uh, uh, Linux containers and uh, servers, this is something that will be very beneficial to produce a WYSIWYG report. Um, then continuing on, uh, the next feature is a performance improvement, performance enhancement, actually. So uh, this particular one, uh, I think it's a major uh, improvement uh, that we made in uh, for this release. Um, and this has to do with the uh, uh, HTML export. Um, and previewing your reports uh, in one of our uh, web-based viewers, whether that be the uh, the lightweight JavaScript or the web viewer control. Um, so the way we've essentially gained the performance improvements here is uh, we are rendering and exporting each page of the report in parallel. Um, and this is the, this is essentially the result of that. So the table that you're seeing here um, gives you the result prior versions and then the, uh, uh, the parallel um, uh, uh, building and uh, export of HTML files. Um, and the performance improvements you can see uh, are shown here. Um, now these reports uh, that, that are listed here, they vary in their complexity and the number of records and the number of pages. Uh, you know, this invoice list obviously is a, uh, you know, 800 plus pages of invoices, you know, simple uh, invoices. 
Um, and then this is basically the same thing, but an RDL. So it's a uh, invoice list created um, from an RDL, uh, you know, FSRS, RDL report uh, that we open and, and render in the same way. Um, and then the complexity basically increases, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in this table, uh, the TOC being the most complex that has um, several groupings, uh, several uh, charts, um, and several uh, in, uh, embedded and nested controls. Um, so this basically will be the most complex of these reports, and uh, you still get 38% uh, improvement um, in that. Uh, now, obviously, the improve improvement here that we've made is an internal uh, change uh, in our rendering. Um, so there's really nothing that you would need to do as a user aside from, you know, update to the latest version that uses uh, this uh, engine. All right. Um, continuing on. Um, this is, a, I think, a pretty cool feature that we've uh, implemented um, with uh, regards to the table control. Um, basically, it generates a much cleaner um, uh, report, uh, uh, and, and obviously, it just makes for a better user experience. Um, so, it has to do this. This particular feature has to do with dynamically showing and hiding a table column based on a condition, and then, excuse me, and then uh, uh, automatically resizing. Uh, uh, the other columns to fit uh, the width of the table control and consume the empty space left behind by the um, uh, by the, uh, the, the, the the column that we hid. Um, so imagine if you have, uh, for example, a report in which you're uh, showing a series of columns, uh, and you want your users to pick which columns they want to see. Uh, so if they don't pick uh, all of the columns that the table would show like this, right? So the whole report is here, but the table shows uh, this much. Uh, now with this auto width property, uh, if you set this to proportional, the table columns would automatically grow to fill the size of the table that you designed at design time, okay? So it would fit the, uh, that basically uh, report uh, design surface, uh, the, 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 the surface of, or the uh, width of the table itself. Um, so let's take a look at let's take a look at this real quick. So let me open up a report um, in all right, let me open up a report in our designer here. So if you're familiar with Active Reports, you're familiar with this designer. So this is a standalone designer um, for Active Reports, and it is one of those reports that we created that uh, essentially uh, you know the user is pre presented with some parameters. So let's run it. Right. So the user is presented with some parameters, um, and then they uh, the, the report is shown, you know, uh, based on the parameters that they that they uh, that they select. Uh, so the columns basically uh, are these parameter uh, elements. Now, um, so as you can see, the table is, is small, uh, but at design time we obviously have have a bigger table. Um, now, how do we use this feature? Um, the way we can do it is just highlight the different columns, the, all of the columns here, um, and in the auto width property, just set this. As proportional um, and then when we preview this now so we can select either all of these to show the whole table or we can select some of them and you can see that still you see a, a you know a table that spans the whole width of the report um, not necessarily uh, you know uh, a small table so now if we just select one column again it's the same thing you see the whole uh, the table span the whole width of the report uh, so I think again, it's a, it's a pretty cool, neat, neat feature for um, you know uh, improved user experience and clean reporting. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead and keep moving here. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to type in. We'll uh, we'll answer them uh, throughout the webinar and at the end of the uh, session as well. <clears throat> All right. The next feature um, is uh, a couple of features specifically pertaining to the chart control. All right. This chart control essentially. Um, uh, the first uh, uh, the first uh, feature that we have is expression support, and again, I think this is a pretty cool feature. As you can see in the image, you know, you could set the um, you can use expressions to highlight uh, certain uh, values. For example, you can have a threshold, uh, you know, and highlight the features below or above that threshold. Right. The image here uh, shows um, and highlights vehicle fuel efficiency below 15 miles per gallon. Right, so there's a line below 15 miles per gallon, and then it highlights, you know, the vehicles um, that are, um, you know, their efficiency is below 15. Uh, now, in order to make this possible, we uh, did a few things actually. 
Um, the first thing is we introduced a rules property uh, for the uh, uh, for the charts plot. Um, we this 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 rules property uh, we introduce it for the charts plot element, um, and along with that rules property, uh, we also in, in, in included some uh, corresponding smart dialogues, especially for the uh, desktop and the Visual Studio integrated designers. Um, that uh, we'll, we'll see this feature in a, in, a, in a little bit, but just sort of to go over uh, the concept of this feature. So uh, using this rules. Uh, you can uh, you can create you know dynamically control essentially the plots uh, background color you can cr control the pro the plots uh, tooltips and uh, you know there's a, a lot of different features or a lot of different pieces that you will see that you can control with this uh, property um, so let's go ahead and and take a look at uh, this so let me uh, run my uh, web designer uh, uh, sample here. And what we'll do is we we'll use the web-based report designer um, to show uh, the this this particular feature in uh, action. Uh, so we'll we'll have a um, uh, uh, a chart sample uh, created already, and we'll use that chart sample, um, and then that uh, and, and we'll add the uh, rules to this chart sample here. So let's go. Let's where's the chart? There we go. All right. So we have the chart here. So now if we select the plot element, uh, you can find the rules under the config section, okay? So we currently don't have any rules uh, associated with this, uh, but what we'll do is we'll add a rule um, and the condition that we'll set, okay? We'll edit the condition here. So we'll say that, uh, let's go to select the expression. All right, and we'll say the current item. So the current uh, data, the current data, charts current data, if it is, let's say, uh, less than or equal to 10, we want to do something. So you see this is a product count, you know, of, of uh, so we want to see if whatever products are under 10 uh, count, then we want to highlight that. Maybe we need to order those, those products. So we'll we'll say that. Um, you know, uh, use that uh, expression here. And then the rule properties, we'll add a couple of different rule properties here. So let's add one. And for this, we will say, we will check the change the background color. Let's change it to red. All right. And then let's add another one. Uh, and here is something that you can, you know, a place you can, you can choose different properties, right? So you can uh, assign a tool, uh, tool, uh, a tool tip template. Um, and we can also use the line width. So let's use the line width and say, let's highlight it to five. All right, five point. And let's add one more. And again, we'll do the line, let's do line color. And for the line color, let's use, you know, highlight in um, uh, purple. So now if we preview this, we'll have a chart that essentially highlights uh, the elements or the pieces that are uh, uh, under 10 in count for us, right? So the product count is 10 or below, it highlights it, right? So in red and uh, obviously the, um, uh, the highlight uh, around, the, uh, uh, around the element itself, around the bar itself. Um, now this uh, obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a, an interesting feature because uh, as we saw, you can actually add multiple rules. You could add multiple uh, uh, properties for each rule. Uh, so you can imagine you can create some very, very complex, uh, you can create some very, very complex charts uh, that, uh, you know, at runtime, their, their behavior changes using these expressions and these rules and properties. Um, so I think this is a very, very cool feature of, uh, that, that we improved or that we implemented in uh, Active Reports 15.1. Um, one thing I should mention that this is for RDL and page reports. So the two features, the two chart element features that we will go over, these are both uh, in the RDL and page reports, uh, not part of section reports at this time. Uh, the other uh, feature that we implemented is a chart template, a radar chart template. Now this radar chart template, radar of course is, you know, uh, uh, you can think of it like, a, it's also called the spider chart essentially. Um, uh, I think this is something that was requested by one of our, some of our customers, excuse me. Um, so we've implemented this radar chart uh, in, in this particular release. 
Um, obviously, radar charts are you know, a good way to show uh, relationships between three or more variables uh, within, your, within your data. Um, and we have uh, four different uh, plot types for the radar chart. So we have the area, the bubble, the scatter, and the line. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the uh, radar chart uh, creation. All right. Um, let's go ahead and create, where is my, there we go. Okay, so we don't want to save this. So this particular report, let's go ahead and delete that. The reason I'm using this particular report is because I have the data set already added here, specific data set for the radar charts. Um, so I'll go ahead and add a chart, right? Resize it uh, from the data set here. I am going to uh, get the games and the games uh, I'm going to put in the category fields um, and then gold medals let's put in the data field. So this is going to be gold medals based on a, on, you know, a per year, basically. Um, and then we're going to see which country uh, uh, the country is going to be in the encodings, uh, which country essentially got how many golds, uh, gold medals in which year of the Olympics, right? So let's change the title here. So let's say gold medals by year. All right. And I guess I didn't even change the plot template, the plot template here. So let's change the plot template. All right. So highlight the chart. Let's go down to the plot template and use a radar chart here. All right. Uh, I think we're good. Uh, one thing I need to change is that uh, this is not uh, count. So let's just change it to gold. Uh, let's move the legend. Um, so I'll select the legend. Uh, let's position it. Uh, let's do the top and let's do horizontal. All right. So I think that should be good. Uh, fingers crossed. Let's see. There we go. Okay. So we have a chart uh, essentially, uh, you know, based on the data that we have here. Um, now we can obviously change the layout a little bit. We can, you know, uh, remove the, um, uh, the coloring or change the colors uh, of the axes and the uh, labels. Uh, or even the uh, series, um, we could play around with that uh, if we need to. Uh, so if we select a different uh, label, uh, sorry, okay, there we go. So if we select a different palette, the chart will change based on the palette that we select, all right? So uh, easy enough, I think it's easy enough to create a, um, a radar chart uh, in active reports. All right, so we're making good time. Let's go ahead and continue. I think we have uh, another, yeah, one more slide. Okay. Um, so obviously these are not the only features that we introduced in Active Reports 15.1. There are several other features that we have. Um, the PDF UA accessibility improvement. This, uh, I think, again, is, is a, is a um, you know, very neat feature um, for section reports specifically. Uh, so the chart element, uh, the chart control within section reports, um, uh, you know, when, if you created a PDF, an accessible PDF uh, in prior versions, um, and you hit the, you know, read aloud option in Adobe Reader, um, it would not read the chart, uh, not the chart, but the image control. It would just read the name of the image control. So image one, for example, right? Now we added a title property to the image. Uh, title property. Now, if you enter a title, uh, let's say, you know, um, a company logo uh, in the title, um, and again, you create an accessible PDF from that section report, and the user uses this read out loud uh, feature of the reader, um, it will say uh, the name of uh, the, the uh, title of that uh, image control. So it would say uh, a company logo. Right? So that it will read out the logo. So for, for accessible PDFs, this is really good uh, feature to, uh, to to have implemented. Uh, it makes the PDFs a lot more accessible, um, essentially. Uh, the second thing is that we extended page break options. Um, so again, uh, as as you're familiar with Active Reports, you are uh, uh, Active Reports users right now. Um, you know our data regions. Obviously, they support some of our data regions. They support grouping like the table, the tablets, and the lists, uh, and and obviously the banded list. Um, you could always set page break options. Uh, for those, um, you know, either before at the, at the start or at the end of these groupings. Um, now we've added a couple of different options. Uh, we've actually added a page break location enum, a property, so that if you go to the grouping section of these 
um, uh, of these controls, uh, you will see a page lo a break location option, and that you know essentially will drop down these fields. So we had the start and the and the end, uh, but now we also added the start and end and between, right? Um, so we had customers, for example, that uh, you know created um, uh, printable reports, right? So they they created reports and then they needed to print those reports, um, and they needed each grouping to start. Um, on an odd a, on an odd page, for example, or an even page, uh, for example. Um, now this feature makes it a lot easier for them to do that. Um, so these extended page page break options they make that specific use case a lot more easier for them. Um, that is the uh, um, uh, catalyst behind this particular feature. Um, and then another feature that we implemented this is a whole new uh, export uh, function uh, within. Uh, um, uh, 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 active reports uh, again supporting uh, page and RDL. Um, so this new export uh, option essentially is optimized for performance. Okay, it's optimized for performance. That's that, that's the main thing. That's the uh, uh, that's the crux of it. Um, that it supports. Uh, you can export to uh, XLSX and CSV, um, and it only supports the table and the tablet control. Uh, table and tablets, you know, in the matrix, uh, those controls. Uh, so if you have, for example, a tabular report with, you know, a large amount of data and you need to export that quickly to uh, an XLSX format, for example, an Excel format, um, this is the way to go. This is the uh, export that you want to use. Um, now, this export obviously is, is, is going to export the data, right? So it's going to maintain the structure of the data. Uh, it's not going to maintain the layout related features. So, for example, um, you know, uh, page breaks and, and 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 these types of things will not be included because this the the purpose of this export is to ex just to export the data uh, of, uh, of of the report to um, Excel. Uh, if you have, for example, multiple controls on your report, each control will be placed on a separate sheet within a workbook. Um, so that's another feature that's uh, inherent in this um, export option. Okay. So uh, this is uh, th these are some of the features that we've implemented. There are a couple of others that I, 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 I don't have listed here. For example, we have a cross aggregate feature for the Tablix control. Um, again, a, a very complex uh, you know aggregation that we tried to make as simple as possible uh, for uh, for our users. Um, you know that's something that we can uh, uh, um, uh, we can do with this particular release. We in, in previous releases uh, had it involved a lot more work. Um, but uh, that's basically it. Uh, so the next steps for Active Reports 15.1 uh, webinar. Essentially, when we finish this uh, webinar, when you exit this webinar, you will have a, a very short survey, like I mentioned, just like four or five questions, I think, um, and uh, you know, multiple choice. Just type in your answers. Literally, take you like two minutes at most. Um, we do offer um, customized demos. Uh, now you guys are already uh, Active Reports users from what I'm seeing. Um, uh, if you want to find out more specifically about these features uh, or about you know other features that we've implemented since your current uh, since the version you're using, uh, you can schedule a demo and we can go over um, those enhancements and those features with you in a little more detail. Uh, again, if you haven't already purchased Active Reports, feel free to contact our sales uh, uh, sales team here, ActiveReports.sales at Grape City, uh, for a quote on upgrading uh, or purchasing a whole new license. Um, again, you know, uh, with the promotion going on, you might that might be an enticement to purchase a new license as opposed to <laughs> upgrade your existing license. Um, and again, this is the promo to uh, get the free maintenance, um, and this is the promo code. Um, so again, it's, it's valid until uh, the 15th of May. Um, going on, um, you know, we do appreciate your feedback. So again, you, the uh, one way to give your feedback is through that post survey, post webinar survey. Um, another one is just to send us an email, send us, you know, some note or something like that, just to sort of give us, you know, feedback on uh, this webinar, feedback on the features that you've seen so far in this webinar, on the product itself, if you have any bugs anything like that. If you have any problems, you know, feel free to reach out to me um, or uh, to Christian uh, and Tyler, um, and we'll be able to uh, help you um, through uh, any questions that you have, walk you through it. All right. So with that, um, I want to thank you guys, and I want to uh, sort of open up the floor to see if you guys have any questions, um, and uh, we can go ahead and answer those questions. 
uh, I see that there are some questions. So uh, Christian and Tyler, anything that we um, that we need to answer at this time? Yeah, um, I, I posted it to the all uh, so everybody can see it, the links for the documentation and whatnot. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, Brad was asking, um, okay. Okay, I think this is this is what uh, this is what Tyler was mentioning that there uh, is a uh, link posted to the documentation for Brad's question there about. Um, okay, the web designer. Okay, um, anything else? Uh, any other questions that we have to answer here? Okay, so Brad, you're going to schedule a one-on-one -on -one demo. Perfect. That's great. Um, all right. All right. Yeah. So the the majority of the questions here have have to do with the um, the web designer and essentially just customizing it to um, your use case. Um, all right. I don't know if you guys have any other questions, guys. Um, if there are no questions, uh, we can go ahead and end a little early here. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, guys, um, if you have questions, please type them in. Um, if you don't have questions, we'll go ahead and end. Um, and then, uh, like I said, please do fill out the, uh, the, the survey, the post-webinar post survey. It will definitely help us out, okay? Um, okay, what servers uh, should be used in Linux instead of IS or Windows? Um, so I'm not sure I understand your question there. Um, so when you, yeah, I'm not sure I understand your question there. So as far as the, the Linux uh, um, um, uh, servers, um, uh, you know, it doesn't matter which Linux server. So we have customers essentially that are using OpenShift, for example, they're using, um, you know, um, uh, went to whatever the Linux server is, uh, OS is, uh, they use it and there shouldn't be any problems with it because .NET Core supports it. Um, and if .NET Core supports it, so do we. Um, so with regards to the Linux uh, operating system in itself, uh, there is no um, limitation, at least from our side, um, aside from needing to be a uh, web application for section reports at this time. I hope that answers the question there. Okay, I guess that's it, guys. Um, let's go ahead and and call it. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, you'll have you have our email addresses here. Uh, reach out and and just give us uh, you know uh, ask us any questions that you might have. Okay, thank you, guys. Uh, hope to see you guys in uh, the next webinar, uh, if not sooner. Thank you.